So it is when it comes to COVID masks. If you do not like the idea of submitting to your government, perhaps this will give you some, wow, I get to wear a mask mentality. And now, the XYZ Evening News with Donald Quick. Good evening, I'm Donald Quick with the XYZ Evening News. Tonight, we have a special report on the new economic system that went into effect just last week. Our special news correspondent, Shirley McMedia, brings you this report from a local supermarket. Shirley? Thanks, Don. Behind me, you'll see what looks like a normal line of customers paying for their groceries. But if you look very closely, you'll see that they're paying without money. All the customers have to do is place their hand over the laser scanner. It reads their personal identification number, then subtracts the amount of money they're paying for their groceries from the credit they have in their bank account. We've come down here to get the enthusiastic reactions of some of the first people to receive their credit mark. Ma'am, what do you think of the new cashless credit system? Oh, goodness, it's wonderful. I don't have to fiddle around in my purse anymore looking for change or write checks. It makes life so simple. Oh, the mark? I mean, it's just totally cool. It's like my own personal number on my body. Nobody can take it. I can't even lose it. Nobody can steal it. It's totally awesome. Yeah, I'm glad I got the mark. I feel a lot safer now, and I'm glad they made it mandatory. I think it'll make it easier for the law enforcement yeah, agencies yeah, well, to we keep it. It's on sale. Just a second. To, you know, to keep track on the criminals and... Uh, and I think society would be a lot safer. Yeah, come on, look, see, it's got a... And speaking of criminals, the government has issued a law making it illegal to buy or sell without the new credit mark. It is a criminal offense to refuse to get your own personal identification number. Shirley McMedia, XYZ News at your local supermarket. Back to you, Don. Thanks, Shirley. You may be wondering, why would anyone want to refuse to get a credit mark anyway? Here's an interview with a religious fanatic who was picked up just this afternoon for failing to have a credit mark. In fact, he was picked up in front of a credit registration center for passing out pamphlets claiming to expose the new world credit system as a sort of, quote, satanic conspiracy. to take the mark because the bible warns all true christians not to take the mark or to worship the world dictator which is known as the antichrist in the bible so do you believe this is worth going to prison or even dying of course i do you know i was arrested for warning other people about taking the mark before it's too late you know the antichrist is going to be destroyed and jesus is coming back soon and also it says now with me on the show tonight is pastor Demkoff, the pastor of one of the largest and most respected churches in our city pastor Demkoff. Does the Bible really say that it's wrong to respect, honor, and worship our great world leader? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I personally have received the mark myself, and I've advised my congregation to do the same. It's mostly just these, like, religious fanatics who freak out about these type of things. Uh, but if you would read the Bible, it clearly states in Romans 13, chapter 13, verses 1 through 7, that Christians should submit to the higher powers. The admonition is clear. Submit to your government and do with what you're told. Let's jump back into First Peter, if and you recall. <laughs> you're shaking your head. Yeah. <laughs> as well as First Peter 2.17 that tells us to honor the king. So what could possibly be wrong with uh, submitting to and worshiping our great world leader who has restored order to uh, the world after the economic crash? It's just another level uh, that the church is moving on to, and we're very excited about all the good things that the new world order is accomplishing. Totally thoroughly get it and yet the admonition is clear submit to your government and do with what you're told unless x5 you are being told to sin whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law Even the apostles. 
apostles believe that Gentiles should follow the Mosaic law, consider the first church council, Acts 15, 1 through 5. Do the New Testament epistles teach that Gentiles should follow the Mosaic law? No, they don't. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return, and will build again the tabernacle of David which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Is in regard to the latter half of the tribulation period, when when men would be required to have the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell. My question is, uh, once a person takes the mark, is there any possibility of him coming to Christ? Yes. Uh, I think, you know, in, in the seven-year tribulation coming in the future, we're going to get into this so probably a week from Sunday night, maybe this Sunday night, maybe a week, I'm not sure. But um, the tribulation is a seven-year period, right? The rapture of the church, seven-year tribulation, then Christ returns, sets up his kingdom. Now, in that seven-year period, really two things happen. God begins to judge the world. In, with a series of holocausts and at the same time he begins to redeem his people Israel and in the process of this the Antichrist establishes his rule and in order to function in the economy of the Antichrist you have to take the mark of the beast now the question is if you're living in the tribulation period and you take this mark in other words you identify with the beasts empire will you still be able to be redeemed and I think the answer to that is yes Yes, otherwise there would be no salvation of anybody in the end of the tribulation. So I don't think the fact that someone takes that is a sentence to it, to permanency any more than you being a part of this world system once in your life means you have to be a part of the system all your life. If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus.